Praise the Lord. It's so good to be here and these young people doing all this. I think I want to adopt, adopt about half of them and take them back to Tennessee with me, uh, the work that they're doing here. Look at this. Man, I'm telling you, didn't we have we been worshiping the Lord already this evening? Isn't it great to know that he is in the house? Praise the Lord. I come to worship the Lord with you tonight, not for you now, but with you tonight. Hallelujah. How many come out to receive a blessing? You've already been shouting all over the house tonight as far as that is, but there's still more blessings. If we enter into the Spirit, there's still more blessings yet for us to enter into tonight. As I've been introduced several times and the flowers have been given to me and all of these things have been going on tonight around here like this and today and when I was here before. So I praise the Lord. Me and my wife went to church here in the 90s. We went on choir tour tour with the choir at that time. Many of you, the elderly, uh, probably recognize me and my wife. We've been married 63 years, the 21st of this month. She passed away on the 24th, three days after our anniversary last year. I had a time trying to get over it, you know, but I am getting over it. Not over it, and there will be over it completely. Still have to have a cry every now and then. Sit down and have to have a cry every now and then. Pulled up a song on the internet there this week, sitting there at the house, and me and Sheila both had to have a cry. Sitting there listening to it, you know. I'll, she'll, I'll always miss her. She'll always be in my heart, as far as that part is. But if I could, I wouldn't call her back for the suffering and things that went on in this world and in this life because she's in a much better place today. And we always said when we were all time before she passed, I said, am I looking for Jesus to come? She said, we're going together. And she said, we're going together. We're not going to go separate. We're going together. When the Lord comes, we're going together. When she passed, I was holding her hand in the bed. So give me just a minute. But, you know, it's harder, it's getting a little easier, but I still miss her, still love her, and always will, as far as that part of it is. But I will bring you a message tonight, if it be the Lord's will. I always say this because, you know, if the Lord ain't in it, all you can do is say a few words. You know the word of God, you can say a few words. But if the Lord is in it, then folks will be blessed. And this is what I want to do tonight is bring a blessing onto each and every one of you that are here tonight. And them young people really blow my mind, I'm telling you. Where I go down there, we don't have crowds like we do up here. And the young people are, well, young people like that would probably fill up half of our church down there because it's the little churches are kind of on the small side. But let me tell you something. God is still moving, don't matter where it's at. He said, as many as two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be in the midst also. So it don't take a house full to get something done with the Lord Jesus Christ. It takes faith. Faith is what breaks the yoke and what breaks the barrier. I'll say this and I'll read the word and get into my message. A couple come to visit this week. And they don't live a Christian lifestyle, and, you know, they were out in sin, as far as that is. And I said to them, do you know Jesus loves you? Would you like to go to church on a Sunday? He said, I'm going to hell. I said, is that your choice? No, but I'm going to hell. See, we all make choices in our lives. If we choose to go to hell, then that's where we're going to go. But God made a way that we don't have to go to hell. He went to the old rugged cross and he hung on Gilgotha's heel there. But what people really don't realize is before he poured our salvation on Gilgotha's heel, he stood at Pilate's Hall and took the stripes on his back for our healing. And we miss out on that a lot of times. We miss out on that a lot of times. And God is my healer. Probably a lot of you don't know it, but I was laid dead for eight days in 2005 told somebody earlier today, I said, I look pretty good for a dead man. I went, had a kidney stone and went septic and turned. My organs was all shutting down. My family was all there. They told my wife, said, if he ever gets out of here, he'll have to go to rehab for at least a year. And after that, he will have to go to a rest home for the rest of his life. And I 
love my wife. And she said, you don't know that man. You don't know the God that he serves. She went to the house and she got a picture. Thought it said, this is what my husband looked like when he come in here. This is what he's going to look like when he walks out of here. And I raised my hands and I be, after eight days I opened my eyes and I had two, grands, uh, two grandsons sitting, standing over there and a friend of mine standing there I look, in the intensive care by the door. And I opened my eyes and I looked over there and I seen him and I said, it take all three of you gentlemen there to make one good man. And they come about four foot off the floor. Hadn't been no sign of life for eight days, but yet I woke up and I was as alert as I am now. And it's all not because of me. It's not because of the doctors. It's because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's because he's the one that does the work. I don't do nothing. I present his word and he does it. Hallelujah. You have your Bibles and will. You might think this might be a pre-Easter message. But I've been dealing with this and God is what gave me. Give me this for tonight. And when he gave me this, all the songs tonight just lined right up with, with the message. So you know when it does like that, it's on the right track. I'm going to be in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, and I'm going to start at best about verse 13. I'm not going to start. I may reach back into the scriptures and get some of the resurrection part there uh, and, and that. But my title to this tonight if you walked with Jesus, would you recognize him? If you walk with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, would you recognize him tonight? In my doing ministry work all over Tennessee and different places, there I find that so many people, you can talk to anybody you want to. You know Jesus? Yeah, I know him. It got him here in their head. Everybody you talk to has heard something about the Word of God. They've got Jesus in their head. They know of Jesus. They don't know him personally. Back in the 70s, back in the 60s, when I first began, I had a, an old pastor that told me, he said, you know, he said, when people get Jesus from here out of their head and get him six inches below the collarbone, then they'll have something. This is what it's about tonight. If you found your places, then bow your head and take your hands this way and ask the Lord to bless this old man one more time and anoint his lips and play one more time. Heavenly Father. Starting at the 13th verse. Luke 24, starting at verse 13. And they told two of them went the, that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about a three score furlong, about three, three score furlong. And as they had talked together of all the things that had, which had happened, and it came to pass that while they were communing together and, and, relay, and, and uh, talking about Jesus there, that Jesus himself drew nigh and went with them. But their eyes was beholding that they should not know him. And Jesus said, and he said unto them, this is Jesus talking now, and he said unto them, what manner of communications are these? that you are having one with another and are so sad. I'd like to stop there for just a minute and I'll go on a little further. Now we find here, these two men knew Jesus because later on before that, in the verses before that, it talked about them being in the crowd of all the miracles that Jesus had did. Sometimes we go to church and we see all the magnificent works that the Lord Jesus Christ has done. People getting saved, people getting healed, all these types of things. We see these are happening every day in our lives. But we neglect to 
realize where all of this is coming from. It's coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. These men were part of the congregation that was there. And whenever they went to the to the sculpture early in the morning, Mary did, and she found, she went in and she didn't find Jesus. You read, read prior to where I started there, you'll find that in the scriptures there, that they went down and they looked and they could not find him. But yet angels, two men in white apparel stood and said, the man you're looking for said, why are you looking for the dead, for the dead among the living? So this is what it's about tonight. Are we lively stones or are we dead stones tonight? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we dead stones or live stones tonight? I believe in praising God. I come to praise him with you, not for you, but with you. And another place in the scriptures, the Bible says that they'll come before you and and want to be entertained. They'll come before you for a lovely voice and somebody can pay skillful on the music there to be entertained. I find a lot of that going on in a lot of the churches in other, in other areas. We come in the house of God to praise him and to glorify him and to worship him. This is a place where we come to worship. Our work we do outside these walls is where we do the work in the city. When we're in the marketplace to meet people and tell them about Jesus Christ and his love that he gives, has for them and how he died and gave his life that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. We can't have life if we don't have Jesus. We, got, we can breathe. We can exist. But we don't have life. When we have life, we got life within us, that life that flows like a river of water flowing out of our bellies and be there forever. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. What manner of conversation are you having and being so sad? These men had lost their leader. They said, are you a stranger in Jerusalem and haven't heard what's taking place, what's going on in our city? How that our leaders and how that our uh, people took Jesus Christ and brought him before the council and condemned him and sentenced him to death to be crucified while well, we thought he was coming to save the Israel. We thought he was coming to be a king over Israel, which he is. He's not only a king over Israel, but he's king over everything. He's a king of kings and a lord of lords. He's my king, walking with the king, didn't recognize who he was, said and they delivered him took him in and crucified him. Now let's stop just there for just a few minutes. Now let me, let me kind of reminisce in just a minute. Last time they seen Jesus, he had come out of Pilate's hall and he was beaten and bloody and they did, couldn't hardly recognize him then. So how would they recognize somebody was all cleaned up and walking along beside them and didn't know who he was? Are you walking with Jesus today? You know, you can walk right along beside of somebody in your workplace, wherever you're at, and not know you're walking beside of a king. Not know you're walking beside of a king. Why? Because Jesus Christ is my king. He said, I was adopted into his family. I'm of the royal priesthood. I'm adopted into his family. And what he has, I have also. Hear people say, just name it and claim it, and you got it. No, don't work that way. Don't work that way. You go through hard knocks to get where you're at. You show me somebody that's shouting on top of the mountainside, on top of the hillside, which is good. Don't get me wrong. It's good to get on the mountainside, on top of the mountain, and shout every now and then. But the trials and the tribulations and the growth comes in the valley. When you're down in the valley, when you've lost somebody, when you've scarred somebody gone that you, a dear friend or a loved one or a job or something is some kind of sickness is overtaking your life and you're down in the valley trying to figure out, God, what is all this? What is happening to me? What is this? This is when we grow because when God answers that prayer and we realize who he is and what he is and what power he has, then we can raise up and say, I glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What manner of man is this? When we go to church, do we go to worship? I have this problem in Tennessee. 
We have that there. A lot of people come in, you know. Me, I like to worship the Lord. I like to let him know I love him. When me and my wife, was, when she was here, I let her know all the time that I loved her. I bought her gifts. I did good things for her. And that's the same way with the Lord Jesus Christ. If we love him, we're going to want to serve him and honor him and glorify him in our lives. This is what it's about tonight. Are we walking and talking the, about Jesus Christ in the marketplace? In the marketplace where we are every day. I hardly ever meet anybody. Just anybody that travels with me. My pastor down there in Ohio, I mean down there in Tennessee, said, you know, we, me and him went to visit a, a person that's sick with cancer. Man was getting ready, they bring, getting ready to bring a hospice in for him. Went to his family. He'd been to church maybe once or twice, the family had. Went up and knocked on the door. I said, uh, we're from the church. We come to see so-and-so. Well, he's in there in the bed. Pastor looked at me and looked at them and said, wait a minute here. He said, that man never sees a stranger. I'm not a stranger to anyone. I'm a child of the king. I'm, I'm royalty. I got Jesus in my heart. I got Jesus in my soul. He said that he would write his words in the tables of our hearts and we would be able to remember them that we would be able to quote those scriptures. We'd be able to use those scriptures. We'd be able to do all of these things. And he went on. He said, what manner of conversation is this? Begin to talk. Well, he came. He was a great prophet. We know that. And he was a great man of God. We know that. Because all the mighty works that he did and all the things that he did to lift, to lift up God and to glorify all the sicknesses that he had healed him, let me relate back to just one or two. The woman with the issue of blood, she purposed in her heart, in John's gospel, she purposed in her heart, said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Jesus didn't say anything to her. She was unclean. She wasn't supposed to even be in the crowd. She's supposed to stand off, away off, and holler, unclean, unclean, unclean. But instead of that, she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And she had a job to do to push through the crowd to get to him just to touch the hem of his garment. As they were saying, woman, what are you doing here? You're unclean trying to push her back. Sometimes we have to push through the adversary that tries to hinder us in order to get the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You can say hallelujah, glory, whatever. But it, what it amounts to tonight is are we walking with Jesus and recognize who he is? Young people, you're out on the streets, in the schools, and the places, colleges, all these types of places, you have a great opportunity to witness the Lord Jesus, by the Lord Jesus Christ and his saving grace and his power to heal. And, you know, I don't understand. I don't even try to understand. I've learned this down through the years. Somebody say, how can you preach healing when your family's sick, when your wife died? I'm not God. I don't claim to be God. Sure, I got, I got a little bit hurt at Jesus because I lost somebody that I loved. That's human. That's the natural side of it. That's the human side of me. But the spiritual side of me says she's in a better place and she's out of her pain and she's being glorified. She's walking with Jesus on the streets of gold. And that's what I'm looking forward to in a few days. I got an old saying I, tell, I use a lot down home. I've said it a couple of times up here. Coming out of morning worship one morning, my pastor said to me, shaking hands out there with everybody, he said, I'll see you this evening. This evening. I said, well, if the Lord comes, I won't be here. You guys go ahead and have church. I won't be here. He said, what? He didn't realize you know, <laughs> what he said there. But listen, we got to have a little humor along with everything else. But it's true. If the Lord came, I'd be out here right now. If that trumpet sounded, he's going to blow it. Let me tell you something. He's going to step out on the clouds of glory. 
that trumpets are going to sound. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And we that are dead, we that are the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we that are alive and remain are going to be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and be caught up forever to be with him in the air. Oh, glory. I'm looking forward to that. The Bible says eyes are not seen, ears are not heard, and neither has it entered into the hearts of men the joy that waits us when we get over there. Glory, hallelujah. I got loved ones there I'd like to see, and I know I'm going to see them. Why? Because I'm on my way to heaven. I'm on that highway called holiness. You read about it in Jeremiah, and you read about it in, in the Isaiah, the highways a way and a highway, and the way is called holiness. and said no rave and beast, no unclean thing is going to pass over it, but it's going to be for what? For the redeemed of the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. It's going to be for the redeemed of the Lord. We're going to walk there on. And our misery and our loneliness and the things that we've had, our trials we've had so many of, is going to turn into blessings. They're going to turn into joy. We're going to have joy and singing for, for disappointments that we've had in our lives. Why? Because Jesus promised it to us. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then let's go down to verse about verse. 25. I don't claim to be a long-winded preacher. I used to be, but I had to slow down a little bit when I started doing radio work because it only gave me 30 minutes. Then I started in doing some on the Internet there, and they only want you to do 15 minutes. And I said, now, wait a minute. I can't hardly get this thing started here in 15 minutes. I'm just beginning to get, get through praying in 15 minutes. And verse 25, then he said unto them, O oh, foolish and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And he began to talk to them then, beginning at Moses and the prophets. And he began to expound to them the word of God. And as he began to expound the word of God to them, oh, I said, to, and when he departed from them later on down the verse, Oh, how our hearts did burn within us whenever he opened our eyes and expounded the word of God and opened it up to us. Oh, how our hearts did burn within us. Oh, let me tell you something. They didn't finish eating the meal because they'd sit down to eat in Jesus. They didn't even recognize who he was till he blessed the bread and broke it and began to give them some of it. And then their eyes would open. It tells me they had eaten with him before and many times before they had eaten with him. Oh, let me tell you something tonight. We might come to church and partake of the of the goods of the church here, you know what I mean, the blessings of the church and the upgrading and the shouting and the praising God. But listen, when it's all over with and we go out that door there, the man we meet on the street that is down and out, it's our job to help him. It's our job to say, hey, what do you need? You don't have to give them money. Take them if they're hungry, take them and get them a sandwich. Don't give them money. They'll do something else with that money. Get them a sandwich. Get them something to eat. I've done that before. I've helped people before. I don't believe, you know, I, I've had people to come, one of the pastor in the church, say we have needs. Fine. We got children. We don't have any food. That's fine. What, what is it there? So I'd say, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Right after church, I got a couple people to go to the house with you and see what it is that you need and your children. And then we'll go to the store and we'll get exactly what you need to help you and to see you through this time of trouble. I believe in helping people. I believe that's what God expects us to do. Back in 61, when I first gave my heart to the Lord, me and my wife, it was in a revival, and we went to church. Now, listen, church didn't let out then like it does now. You didn't get out at 7, 7 or 7.30 in those days. You got out at 10.30, 11 o'clock, sometimes 12, sometimes 1 or 2 before you got out of there to go home. And everybody left to shouting and praising God. And they didn't worry about getting up the next morning. They got up the next morning, went to work, just like nothing ever happened. You know, that's, that's what God expects out of us. We come, we come home. As all Pentecostal people do when they go home from church, they got to get a snack. That's a Pentecostal way. It has to happen. So we sat down and got us a snack, and we went to bed. 
my wife blew my heart. Rich over there about 1.30 in the morning and said, get up. Get up. I said, well, what's wrong? You sick? No, just get up. And I did. I got up. I was a good little fella. I just mind my husband. Got right up just like the rest of you men do. She said, there's somebody in trouble. The Lord has placed the family on my heart that the children went to bed tonight crying for something to eat because they were hungry. We need to go and take these people some food. And it's people that we knew that was in the church, but they hadn't said anything. So we got up, we got groceries together, everything together, three or four bags of groceries, went to the person's house, knocked on the door, and the woman come to the door, and we had the groceries, and she just broke out and cried and said, I didn't think God would ever hear our prayers. I didn't think God would send somebody to help us. Let me tell you something. You don't know what you're doing when you help somebody out on the streets. Any words of that, you don't know who you're helping or what it is because the Bible teaches us. Oh, that's another message. So I'll break it just a little bit of bread there, but that's another message. He said, I was hungry, and you give me meat. Matthew's gospel. He said, I was hungry, and you give me meat. I was thirsty, and you give me water. I was sick, I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you come to me. And his disciples said, Lord, when did we see you in this condition? He said, as much as you've done it unto one of these little ones, you've done it unto me. So in another place it says, if you give them a drink of water in a disciple's name, you'll not lose your reward. I'm here tonight to tell you that if we walk with Jesus and talk with him, how many of you talk with Jesus each day? No, don't, 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 don't want to run, no, don't raise no hands. I'm just a thought I'm throwing out there to tell you. You know, you can get in trouble by asking people to raise their hands for something like that. But I just want to drop a thought into your spirit tonight. There's not a day goes by for why I don't have a conversation with Jesus. Not a day goes by for why I don't have a conversation with him. There's always room in my life to have a conversation with Jesus Christ. I'll find some words to get away by myself for a little while and talk to the master. Why? Because he desires us to communicate with him every day. If we don't communicate with him every day, now let me throw another scenario out there to you today about this tonight. How many of you would go a week without eating? How many of you go a week without eating? Did you know whenever you go, don't talk to the Lord Jesus Christ and you don't praise him, you don't read his word, and you don't communicate with him all week, that you have starved your soul all week? We wouldn't think about starving our natural bodies. We find food for it to eat. Well, our spiritual body is much more important than our natural body. Why? Because it Fear not who can destroy the body, but fear who can destroy the soul and body in hell. This is what it's about tonight. We need to know where we stand tonight with the Lord Jesus Christ. If he should come tonight, are you ready to go? Hallelujah. 72 hours preaching a message like that in Dayton, Ohio. I was walking down the aisle there, and I said, if Jesus should come tonight, are you ready to go? down the other aisle, if Jesus should come tonight, are you ready to go? And one man stood up and said, is you getting a load up tonight? <laughs> but see, I was indicating that if Jesus come, are you ready to go? If you're not ready to go, you're going to be left behind. And this is going to be a terrible sight. In closing, he began to expound unto them about all that was concerning him, about how he was supposed to be crucified, about how that's what he come in this world for, is to be crucified for the sins of the world, to lay down his life that we might have life and have it more abundantly. This is what it was about, what he was saying there. And he had told them all the, all the prophets had prophesied concerning this. Isaiah 53 said he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. We forget to use that. 
I had a pastor one time to say, you know, when you pray and ask praying for healing, praying for somebody, you said, Lord, if it's your will, it's always God's will for us to be healthy. He said, I would that your soul would prosper and be in health, even as your soul so proud of your body is, even you so, soul so prosperous. Expounded to all them, and when they opened their eyes, Jesus vanished out of their sight. When he began to break the bread and they recognized who he was, Jesus vanished out of their sight. They said, oh, how our hearts did burn within us when he began to open up the scriptures and begin to tell us of all the magnificent things that was going on in his lifetime and what he had come for. They didn't sit around no longer. Now, let me reach back here just a little bit here if I might. Now, Emmaus, as I read in the beginning, was three score furlongs from Jerusalem. And they're looking it up on the internet and checking the distance there. It's about seven miles, about a three hour journey. And they'd walked and talked for three hours. And the master had walked and talked with them and expounded with them for three hours on the road. Then they come and they begin to eat at the supper, but he constrained him to stay with them. They made that he made that he would go further, but they constrained him, said, evening time, and will you stay, you abide with us this evening. Jesus sat down and broke bread, and when he broke the bread and began to bless it, you know, we're supposed to bless the bread. We're supposed to bless our, our things that God gives us. We're supposed to bless them. When he began to bless that, their eyes was open, and they recognized who Jesus was. They said, well, we'll get up tomorrow. And we'll go see, we'll go tell all of them we've seen Jesus. No, they didn't do that. Immediately they rose, and away they went back to Jerusalem and began to tell the crowd of people that they had been with, yes, Jesus is risen from the dead, and we have seen him, and we have talked with him, and we know he is alive. Have you talked with him lately? Do you know he's alive? Has he done something for you this evening? Has he done something for you today? I've seen a lot of you shouting this morning and a lot of you shouting this evening. Did he just tip you just a little bit or are you ready to go out now and win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. How their hearts burnt within them. And when we hear a message, sometimes it just grips our heart and just tires it up, brings life to us. Brings life to us whenever we find out, you know, and have to measure up. Somebody does something, something is said to cause us to measure up to the Word of God. It causes us then to grow. You know, the Word of God is like putting fertilizer on a plant. I got something going off here now. Am I ready to go? <laughs> something going off here now. Am I ready to go here tonight? Are we ready to go out and leave out of here tonight? Stand with me if you would. I thank you for your time tonight. Before we close, I never close a service any place I'm ever at without asking, does anybody need the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Savior? That's what we're here for is to get souls saved. If you're here tonight and you don't know this man called Jesus, if you're kindly slack, if you're kindly backslid, as the old saying goes, or cold in the Lord, let me put it that way, cold and indifferent, haven't prayed in three or four days, but expecting the Lord to bless you. James said we have not because we have not. We ask not. When we ask, what we do? We ask a mist that we can consume it upon our own lusts. This is what it's about tonight. If you're here tonight and you've got a need, I can't meet that need for you, but I know Jesus and I know he can. I'm not able to meet that need tonight. If you come up and said, I need a million dollars, I say, I'm sorry, I ain't got it. But I can tell you, man, that God all got more than a million dollars. He owns a cattle of a thousand hills and the hills thereof. All you got to do is just serve him and ask him and he'll meet the needs. He will meet the needs. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody tonight want to get a closer walk with the Lord? Want to get closer to Him? Praise the Lord. 
Need anybody sick among you tonight? Need need prayer for sickness tonight? God is here, and He will meet. He will meet your needs. We got men and women here that believes in healing, and they'll come and they'll pray with you and they'll touch you, and God will raise you up and He'll meet the needs tonight. Hallelujah. If you're here tonight and you got a need, this man called Jesus is able to meet that need. They'll be here to pray with you tonight. Hallelujah. I thank you for your time. I appreciate being here tonight. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and see all of my friends. Part of you I know and part of you I don't. But Brother Ray, I appreciate him so very much. And in closing, I'd like to say this. We went on a par on a, a choir tour. And we went over into Maryland over there. And while we was at Maryland, the choir leader... Brother Gary Turner told me he was going to take me out to the subway. And I've been waiting for that sandwich ever since. What he done is he took me out on a train. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Help me to thank Brother Watts tonight for the word of God. A wonderful message that challenges and touches our hearts. I want you right now, if you would, just bow your heads for just a moment. If our ministers would come, those who are with us tonight, we just pray that over the next few minutes, if you have a need in your life, I want you, while we're praying, I want you to just get out from where you are right now, and I want you to make your way to the front. We want to pray with you and believe that God will touch your life. If you need healing, if you need special prayer, I'm asking you to come right now and ask we're going to agree together with you in the word of God and just believe God to touch your life. Amen. As these are coming, Father, we come to you. We thank you. We bring you every need that we have. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you will touch and minister to the needs of your people. God, as we come, we come with faith. We come believing. We come knowing, God, that you are an, a God who answers our prayers. We give you the glory and the honor. We thank you for the word of God that we've heard tonight. Lord, we understand and know that our faith and confidence in you, a God who is able to touch every need of our lives, we give you glory. We give you thanks and praise for it. We ask you, Lord, now to be with your church. Touch us as we come into your presence. Minister to those who are coming into the altar for special needs. We're asking your work to be done in their lives, and we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Would you just take just a moment here tonight? Would you just... Get out from where you are and let's find a place to pray. Can we spend a few moments in prayer tonight and just ask the Lord to meet the needs that we have, that you have. Pray for your church. Pray for yourself. And let's just get in the presence of the Lord tonight. We need that, don't we? Come and let's pray.